Brown from Sony Picture Television's network. Um, and he's spent a number of years at Sony Pictures uh, with a, a brief stint in Shanghai as well. So she's uh, well versed in uh, the entertainment industry across Asia Pacific and has been busy guiding the, uh, the business on programming choices, on content, on viewer engagement, um, also focusing on the impact of advertising and making sure that the advertisers have their needs met through the, uh, the content and programming. So Annie's been using an inside community for a, a couple of years now, three years now? Wow, time flies. I guess it's Christmas already just about, right? So we're looking forward to hearing from Annie and uh, please uh, give her a warm round of applause. so many like-minded researchers. I think everyone here has an interest in inside community. Um, we have been running our community for three years. So as a television network, we have millions of fans in the region. So to understand our audience, anticipate their needs, and to super serve them is at the core of our business. So that's why we use the inside community, because we can get closer to our customers, uh, we can bring their voices to the management, and share with our colleagues from different internal departments. So what I'm going to share today is some of the learnings we had uh, in managing our community and uh, engage with the members. So a quick introduction of the company. Some people ask me what exactly is Sony Pictures. So we are an entertainment subsidiary of Sony Corporation. So we produce TV content, uh, we produce TV programs, and then we distribute to the TV stations around the world. But our network division, we actually operate television net oh, we operate television networks uh, in over 180 countries around the world. So in Asia, our division, we manage five channels. So you see here, we have two English content, AXN, which is the number one GE channel in the region, as well as Sony channel, which is a companion channel to AXN that targeting females. We have three um, Asian content channels, Animax, dedicated to anime content. Uh, we have one channel, which is an extremely popular Korean channel. We also launched Gem TV last year with Nippon TV, uh, which focused on Japanese content. So with such a diverse portfolio with different viewer segments, it's quite a big challenge for us to understand what's viewer's preference and behavior. And that's why we use the inside community to help us. Um, in the early days, before we had inside community, we really relied on ratings to understand what's going on in the marketplace. Uh, which channels are popular, which programs are doing well, but we don't have the how and why. A lot of times we struggle to answer why certain programs don't do well, why certain channels did extremely well beyond expectation, what's happening in the marketplace, and we couldn't answer the question. But with Inside Community, we have continuous dialogue with our members, so we know uh, what they're watching on different television stations, why they follow certain shows, um, what's the media consumption behavior, and when is the best time to reach them. So with this, we are able to have a much better understanding of the audience, and we are able to do it in a more cost-effective way. So this is our community. It's a regional community, uh, up to close to 4,000 members. Slightly male skilled, slightly younger skilled at the moment. <laughs> um, we make sure we recruit members from the key markets we operate. Uh, so we make sure we have enough members from those key markets so we can do market-specific studies and analysis. Actually, because our panel is an English panel, so we do have members from countries such as Malaysia, or as uh, well as Taiwan, or Thailand, or Vietnam. The number is not big enough if you look at quantitatively, but it does contribute qualitatively, so for us to have a feel of the marketplace. Um, just now someone talk about segments, we also ensure we have enough members from different segments that are important to us, such as students or, or peer maybe segments that's extremely important to advertisers. So we I summarize five key learnings that we had over the years. I think first and foremost, it's always good to plan ahead. Um, I think um, don't underestimate the time of work that's required. Uh, it takes a lot of hard work and planning to ensure that we have a thriving community. Um, so this is actually what we use. It's a very simple master calendar that we discuss on a monthly basis with our internal colleagues. So we have actually two major segments. 
One part is on different studies we carry out for different departments. And last segment is really uh, the engagement we want to do with the members. So we try to keep our study uh, really interesting and less competitive. So you can see we have different studies. We don't have, we avoid two consecutive studies for um, same department. So at least it's different study of different interests of different people. And we also try to do more than two studies a month in order not to overwhelm the members. We intersperse uh, our studies with different communications. It can be newsletter, it can be EDM, or can be different other communications with members of what's going on with the network. Overall, I think we keep our um, community pretty simple and straightforward. So if you look at our product design, if you look at our invites, are always very concise, very clean. Uh, we try to set invites as very straight, uh, short, uh, short, very straightforward. And our whole process is very flexible. So when we want to launch study in the last minute, sometimes we do it within one day uh, to have a new study. So the whole process is simple and clear. And I think one advantage of um, planning ahead is that we can really communicate to the members on what's coming up. So this is one of the recent study. We actually have a few studies on Amazing Race Asia, which is our, one of our biggest production for the year. It's a major project for us. So we actually launched a few studies continuously, which we don't really want to do, but we had to do it. So we were discussing with VC to say, oh, maybe the participants really won't be good because it's a really same study for the same project. So they advised us probably we should communicate the plan to the members upstate, uh, up front. And this is our first invite to the members to tell them what's coming up. We have a few similar studies coming up. We set a stage and ask for the cooperation. So I think sometimes the genuine request for help really works with the members. I think they sign up in the first place to help with the channel and the brand they really care. So if you ask for their support, um, they will do it and they give it, give it to us. So, so far, I think the participant has been good. Uh, we are able to get good feedback and consistent engagement on a few, uh, a few studies we are carrying out for the moment. Um, this is probably my biggest personal lesson learned. Uh, when we first launched our study, we were so ambitious. Our first study is about 15 minutes long, 15 to 20 minutes. Because I think the mentality at the time is like, oh, we are doing a, a new study. It's like an ad hoc study. We try to squeeze as many questions as possible to answer a lot of questions about how people watch TV. So um, I think we were fortunate our members are really good. Uh, the first study, we had a response rate of about 40%, extremely well. Um, and we had the same study, we have a second study, which is equally long. And we can just see the response rate drop to half, uh, about 20%. So right now, we try to keep our studies short, uh, about five to six minutes, definitely no more than 10 minutes, because that's how we can engage members, and they will come back to do more studies. So these are two examples. Um, the first study is about voice, which is a popular program we used to have. Um, it's a study about understanding how they watch the show, and what's the feedback on the program. It's a very simple, straightforward, six-minute study. The second study is about advertising. So we ask for feedback and reactions on a few advertising advertisements we had on our Korean channel one. Slightly longer, uh, 30 minutes. So we can see we actually have prices for both studies. Also the prices for the second study is much bigger, much better. So we can see they have pretty similar um, participation rate, close to 30%. Uh, but the completion rate is very, very different. The completion rate for the long study is about 40% lesser um, than the short study. So if you want to have good participation, you want to have members to complete your study, um, keep the study short. <laughs> but this doesn't mean we can't have in-depth understanding of a specific topic. So normally what we do is we cut the studies into short studies and we're launching waves. So for example, um, this is actually an EDM uh, we sent back to the members based on the learning we had. Uh, we noticed members want to watch the US drama series as close to the US as possible. So we shared back the final to tell them we are going to bring the new series within 24 hours from US telecast. So this is the first communication. And three weeks after that, we launched a study. So we asked them, so how are you watching all those new series titles? Are you watching it at the same time as US within 24 hours? Or are you watching much later? We also follow up to ask more about, do they have the need to watch all those programs same time as US telecast? So based on that, we actually launched a few same time telecast titles this year. So they can watch it same time as Japan and Korea. So we make the window even shorter for our audience. We launched a separate study sometime later to understand whether there's enough demand for catch-up service, because sometimes viewers couldn't watch a program live. So what's the demand on catch-up? 
was the demand are VOD viewing. So we just launched the same study, but in different ways and continuously. So I think it gives us an opportunity to learn from the members, add up on the feedback, share what action was going to take, and we continue to learn some more. Um, it's important to find ways to share back our participant contribution, have informed strategy, and make a difference. So I think a lot of members want to be feel they want to feel um, rewarded and they want to feel empowered that the opinions have been heard. So in, this is one of the communication on how we feedback on actions taken. So actually, this is in the same study about viewing behavior of same time telecast in the U.S. We notice a lot of members, especially those from <coughs> Thailand or Indonesia or rural Malaysia, they still watch the drama much later. They don't watch the first telecast. So we look at open-ended questions, uh, we understand why they're not watching at the same time as early as possible, and we realize they say they couldn't understand the program, because although it's very early to the US, there's no subtitles. They couldn't understand what's going on in the drama. And they even told us some of our competitors, they actually have subtitles for the same thing telecast show, so they asked why AXN couldn't do it. So we brought feedback back to the programming, and we told them they should give subtitles for the first time telecast as well. And armed with the information of programming, when to negotiate with distributors to get the programs much earlier uh, than is necessary to produce a subtitle. And so after about six months, we're able to, able to offer subtitles for all the simply telecast. And this is a communication we send back to the members to let them know we have heard their voices and we're taking actions to address the issues. We try to use a range of tools uh, because we can get more context, we can get more flavor on um, what the feedback is. Um, this is always our favorite. We always ask open-ended questions at the end of each study. I think um, a lot of time we are just so amazed with the number of answers and with the amount of answers we get. Sometimes we get really answers in essay style. Who 